Hey guys, it's Paige. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming my January favorites video and I've got my coffee ready so I'm all energized to share my favorite things with you this month and yeah I am really excited about this video because I was a super good youtuber this month and made a list of all the things so I have a good curation and I really prepared for the video and um, let's all talk about how I have upgraded my youtuber status by having a candle lit in the background and oh I actually really wanted to show you this candle because it's called the tinder flame candle like hello the best pop culture reference of all time i actually picked up this candle at ross because they have really cheap candles and it's vanilla bean so it smells amazing but i brought it home and my roommates were like is that called a tinder flame candle and then we like laughed super hard so if you're wondering that's what's in the background of my video and um let's go ahead and get right into my favorite things that i was loving this month I have some other artists I want to talk about, some organization things, and one like clothing thing. Okay, so I shared a picture of this on my Instagram, and I can't even tell you how much this like makes my organization and like color coding senses just like tingle. Like it just makes me so happy. And it is this box that I have organized all of my paints in. Like I, if you like color coded things, you understand what I'm talking about with this. But I actually found this box at my school and salvaged it. Like it was in this pile of throwaway stuff and I was like, that's so cool. And I originally bought it because I was gonna paint something on the front of it, like a nice like inspiring quote or something. And I might still do that. I do like the way it looks now, but I brought it home and like who knew it would perfectly fit every paint that I own. Like I'm not kidding, there isn't an extra paint around. I have like a few fabric paints, but I don't use those on a daily basis. But like all of my paints that I use regularly are in this box and I just can't get enough of it and it even fit these big ones in the back with a little extra room. So I love this. It's like a super colorful addition to my desk and I just can grab everything I need and I love I can just pull out a few colors based on what I'm going to paint that day and it's just gorgeous. And on that note, another favorite I have is this do-it-yourself magazine storage ideas. And I was at Target the other day. I realized I hadn't bought a magazine in a really long time. And I got a couple, but I normally have never bought like a organization magazine like this. And I love all the storage ideas in here. And it kind of coincided well with my big DIY storage box. So I'm thinking about filming a DIY like organization video. If you guys would like to see it, let me know. I can include like how to make one of those boxes on your own and a few other things I have. So I would love to do that. It would be really fun. Like I said, organization makes me very excited. So I want to do that. And if you want some organization ideas, I recommend this magazine because they have a lot of awesome things in here this month and tutorials and it's just really cool. So I have a couple of cool artists that I want to talk about. Um, the first one I am excited to show you because I kind of like including a few fashion favorites and this is a tote bag. I'll show it to you quickly but let me explain what it's about. Um, this brand is called Live Local Apparel and there's a guy in my town of San Luis Obispo who started making these prints on clothing and bags of local like icons of our town and just kind of like really cute designs. And he started as a small business just like selling it at the farmer's market and I've noticed that he's been expanding and you can now buy his designs for like San Francisco and LA and I want to say like Santa Barbara and like some more Southern California towns. So I think it's really cool that even though his brand is like a local brand and it's called Live Local Apparel for San Luis Obispo, he's kind of expanded it to include other local brands and you can buy his stuff everywhere now and I just think it's so cool. I don't know why it's taking me so long to buy this because like everyone has the shirts but um, I lost all of my tote bags and in California we have to pay for grocery bags so everyone brings their own bags now and I just wanted a nice one. I ended up picking this one up and this is one of the main streets of our downtown and there's some icons here like the movie theater and like Boo Boo Records and the Phoenix Bookstore. So I just love this is like a part of my town and I'm only going to be living in this town for maybe four or five more months because I'm moving back to Arizona in June. So I like to have like little pieces to remind me of it and also the quality of this is incredible. There's like a um, zipper on the top and a little pouch. So I just love that this was handmade and um, it was like 10 bucks. So if you guys are in California at all, I will link their business down below. Nothing, nothing I say is sponsored. I just really like this stuff I'm showing you and uh, 
I will link it down below and maybe you can find something for your town and it's really cool. And I want to talk about another artist. And um, lately I have really been into film photography because I, I just learned how to use a film camera, develop the photos myself, print them for a school project, and it's been really cool. So um, I've already been following a few photographers that I really love on Instagram for a while, but I feel like I appreciate the art even more of it now. And, and this photographer I like is in Arizona, so I love all his pictures and the desert scenes, and I have this like cacti obsession, so I really like all of his photos. And he shoots film and digital, I believe, and when I saw this print, I just had to have it. It is this gorgeous 8x12 print of a girl in the desert holding the Arizona flag, and I just love it. It's like a piece of home to me, and the cool like cacti background is so pretty. As you can see, I haven't had a chance to frame it yet, and I need to do that, but in my next apartment, I'm planning to have this amazing gallery wall of all the art and prints that I love and stuff, so I will definitely be including this, but he's just really talented. He does a lot of kind of like editorial, but like desert boho-y, but like edgy kind of stuff. I don't know how to completely describe it, but I just love his work, so I'm really happy to have this one. And then he included uh, this little 4x6 print as well in my order, which I love, of the cacti with the mountain. He's just really talented and I enjoy following his account and he's someone who posts on Instagram like all the time, which I love because I'm so obsessed with Instagram, so I will also link him down below. Okay, so one art supply I want to talk about is a couple of watercolor brushes and I was really bummed this month because I lost my favorite watercolor brush that was actually really cool because I bought it in Copenhagen. Um, it was a quite expensive paintbrush, like 60 to $65, which I know sounds ridiculous, but I took a watercolor class while I was in Copenhagen and that was the brush we were required to buy. And it was made out of like red sable hair and it was a gorgeous, gorgeous brush. And I'm just really disappointed that I lost it. So I was gonna buy a new one because I just loved the way that it made my paintings come out. It was like the first paintbrush I had where I really noticed that the quality of the brush made a difference in my work. So right before I was gonna buy it, my friend was really kind and she had told me that her grandma actually gave her a lot of watercolor supplies and it was like a huge collection of brushes. And she just let me borrow a couple to try them out and I've been doing a bunch of paintings with them and I wanted to share the two that I liked because these are way more affordable. These are like $10 brushes, so I thought maybe if you guys were looking for an affordable watercolor brush option, this would be good for you. The first one, which is pretty comparable to the one I lost, is the White Sable Brush by Robert Simmons, number 785. And it looks like this with the tip, and this is a pretty big tip watercolor brush. I know this seems kind of really large, but actually when you get the water in there, it makes a really nice point, and you can really get a lot of color payoff and it holds the water in there so you can paint for a while without having to go back to your water cup. So this one is pretty comparable to the one I lost but like I said a lot more affordable. And then I also tried this one which is the Golden Edge 6 brush and the number is 4620 and I'm not sure what kind of brush this is but as you can see the tip is a lot smaller and this was my first experience using a watercolor brush that was like this small. Um, and I really liked it as well. It let me have a lot of control over what I was painting and I actually did like a full section drawing from my architecture studio in watercolor and this was really useful to get in the tiny corners and the tiny details. So I'm really happy that she let me borrow these and when I have to give them back to her, I will probably purchase probably the same one for myself and save a lot of money. And my last monthly favorite I have to share with you is actually a podcast, so I can't show you anything physical, but I am just obsessed with this podcast lately. It is called Being Boss, and podcasts are really useful for me because I love business books, business advice, art advice, you know, just like creative inspiration, but I can't always read them because I'm busy painting or working, so I like to have something to listen to, and it's kind of a nice change from music or a YouTube video, but I found this podcast called Being Boss. It is by two creative entrepreneurs, uh, Kathleen and Emily, and they have like very different businesses, but they're friends and they share this amazing advice. So far, they have released four episodes, and I listened to three of them, and they're just really useful, really tangible and very inspiring. So if you guys like to listen to that kind of content, I would highly recommend it and I will also include all of the links to all the things I mentioned down below and they're really awesome, so check it out. 
All right, guys, that is all I have to share with you today as far as my favorites go for the month of January. I hope you enjoyed it. And I also want to say that I'm about to film my first big YouTube giveaway right now. So that will be coming soon in the next week or two after you see this video. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so if you would like to join in on the creative fun here at my channel. And if you would like to find me elsewhere, you can follow me on my Instagram. It's at Paige Poppy. I share a lot of my art and colorful inspiration for you if you would like to check that out. And until next time, I'm sending you guys positive and creative vibes your way, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!